Hello, I'm Ryan West. I'm an air quality technician too at The Ohio State University at FOD. And today we're going to be talking about uh, replacing and calibrating a pneumatic thermostat. Um, we're first going to talk about the tools we're going to need for that job. Uh, we are going to need a set of thermometers here. Either we're going to need an analog thermometer, digital thermometer, or an infrared thermometer. We're also going to need a set of standard Allen key wrenches. We're going to need this calibration kit that we can get at our stock room. It comes with a 0 to 30 pound gauge, a stinger, a pump ball set, and we're going to need some Teflon tape that's going to make these connections nice and tight. We're also going to need a set of crescent wrenches to help out with that too. And we're going to need a set of calibration screwdrivers. All right, now here we are at our uh, pneumatic thermostat. Um, uh, today's application, we're going to be working with a Honeywell direct acting thermostat. Uh, first step we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove this cover. Um, fortunately for us, we have this Honeywell uh, control screwdriver, which has a already built in Allen key and a uh, control screwdriver end. So if you don't have this tool, you can always uh, go ahead and grab your standard uh, Allen key set, and it's going to be usually the last one here for this Honeywell application, which is uh, zero or point zero five zero. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. Now there's going to be two sets of Allen keys up on the top here that we're going to have to work uh, clockwise in order to run them down in so we can remove this cover. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. All right, and that's going to expose our thermostat. And our next step is we're going to have to uh, get our ambient room temperature. Now I've already put this thermostat or thermometer here in the room and gotten the ambient temperature. So it's going to take a little bit longer sometimes to get this because it's going to need to calibrate itself out and settle out. So we're looking here, we got about 74.3 degree room ambient temperature. So we're going to have to set our, thermo our thermostat here for uh, about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now at this step here, we're going to need to find out what this is controlling. And for this application, we're going to assume that we're controlling this Honeywell pneumatic damper. And we're going to be looking for the spring range here. And luckily for us, the spring range is notated on the side of the actuator. And not all the time are we going to have that kind of uh, luxury. We're going to be able to have this on the side. So you'll have to uh, find that spring range out for yourself. And these are the steps we're going to have to take to do that. We're trying to find the spring range of this actuator. Now this actuator here has the tag on it, uh, but most uh, times out in the field we don't have that luxury. So I'm going to show you how to find the spring range of uh, this actuator. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to take the pump ball here. And we have a quarter inch poly tube on one end with the pump ball and the stop valve on the other end. On the bottom of this we have a bleed port on the bottom. So as we move that to the left, We'll let air out of the bleed port. If we go to the right, that's going to build pressure up in our actuator. So we want to make sure that's in the right, full right position. So we're going to take the poly tube and we're going to go ahead and put it on the fitting of the actuator. Make sure we got a nice tight seal on it. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to watch the stem of the actuator to find out when it starts. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, pumping this up to see when we're actually going to move this uh, rod of the actuator. So we'll go ahead and start. And right there is where we start, and that's right around 3 PSI. So we're going to go ahead and continue to find the max range, or the end range of the spring. So we'll keep pumping that up until the actuator stops. Now this is going to take a little bit of uh, pressure to do this. And right about there is full spring, and that's about 13 PSI. So we're going to go ahead and check that. We're going to go ahead and crack the bleed port, let the actuator rod come back into the actuator. We're going to find out where that rod stops. If it stops right around 3 PSI, then that's our starting point. Right about there. That's right about 3 PSI. So our spring range is 
3 to 13 PSI. If we're going to add those together, that's 16 divided by 2. That's going to be our mid-range point of 8 PSI. And that's how you find the spring range of an actuator. All right, now finding our midpoint, um, we're going to need to add the starting point to the end point and then divide by 2. So in this application here, we have a 3 to 13 PSI spring range. So adding those together give us 16 divided by 2. We got an 8 PSI spring range. So now that we know that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our stinger and gauge up to the access port up here. And that's located at the top side here. And we're going to see what our pressure is. So we want to have an 8 PSI spring in our midpoint. And right now I'm seeing probably about 12, 12 and a half. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my control screwdriver here. And down here in the bottom left hand corner, I have an adjustment screw. On that adjustment screw, I'm going to need to work this counterclockwise to drop the pressure and clockwise to increase the pressure. So we'll go ahead and drop that pressure down to about 8 PSI. And this is going to be something that's going to take a little bit of time to do because it's very, very jumpy and it likes to jump around on you. So you're going to do it a little bit, let it balance out, kind of try to get that um, as close as possible to the, uh, to the um, pressure you're needed. So we have about 8 PSI now. I'm going to let that balance for a second. All right, now we're going to make sure that that's set at 8 PSI. So we're going to go ahead and run this to full cool, which is going to increase our pressure. All right, we're going to balance that about 15. Now we're going to go ahead and break it to set point and make sure we balance out at about 8 PSI. All right, that's right about set point, oh, right about there. And as you can see, we're pretty close to 8 PSI here. All right, now we're going to go ahead and double check that. We're going to go to full heat, which is going to decrease our pressure in our thermostat. And once we're balanced out here, we're going to go ahead and go back to set point. And unfortunately, there's no numbers here to give you an actual 74 degrees. So you're going to have to kind of guess at exactly where 74 degrees is. So it looks to be like we're right on about 8 PSI. And that's how you calibrate a pneumatic thermostat. Now all we have to do is just replace the cover. and make sure we back off these screws again. Go ahead and cinch down the cover. And now we're gonna set our thermostat for our desired set point. So we'll go ahead and set that for 70 degrees and that should be everything that we need to do. All right, just in case you do need to switch out your thermostat, this is how we're gonna go ahead and do that. On the sides of the thermostat here, we have two retention clips that are gonna hold this thermostat onto the thermostatic plate. So we're going to have to come at it from the side using your control screwdriver, releasing the clip on each side on the thermostat here. Now we're going to take the new thermostat, we're going to go ahead and line up the back and snap it back into place, making sure that both retention clips have snapped into place. And you'll notice this little felt piece on the side here. You need to remove that to release the bimetal so it can actually sense temperature. So we're going to go ahead and uh, set that for room set point there. And we'll, then you can go ahead and calibrate this new thermostat. Thanks again for watching our video on how to calibrate and replace the pneumatic thermostat. As long as you follow these steps and use the, these tools available to you, uh, you should be able to accomplish that job. If you have any other questions or couldn't figure something out, just talk to your supervisor or a senior technician and they should be able to help you out. Other than that, thank you for watching and have a great day.